So first of all, I would like to welcome you um, in the talk. So the talk is about the experience which we have made uh, during the large scale visualization using Java FX and, and Elk. So me and uh, my colleagues, uh, we are from, from Bosch. So two different locations, uh, me, um, Sayyid Oun Raza, um, Mr. Makamul, and Amal, we are from Bosch, Germany, and uh, our colleague Rakesh is from, from Bosch, India. So before going into the details of what we have uh, experienced, I would like to provide you a bit of uh, project context. So where uh, we have done <clears throat> this everything. So our product is a platform for multi-core so it contains uh, tools for optimization and analysis of uh, multi-core systems, especially in automotive demands or embedded system. This is a complete uh, Bosch in-house development with open source technologies like Eclipse and uh, Java. So it's a, a model-driven approach. So we generate model out of uh, different sources. So for example, in this case, uh, source code or AutoSAR. So AutoSAR is a automotive uh, standard um, for software uh, configuration. So which model we use is also an open source uh, Eclipse project. And uh, from there we have a model which is named uh, Amalthea. The project is app for MC application platform for multi-core. So what you see on the right side that this actually offers us an opportunity to see uh, different uh, type of information from the from the system. So for example, you can actually define your application, your software, your hardware platform, and the constraints uh, which you want to put on the in the system runtime information. And then um, once you have that information, you can actually simulate or you use uh, different tools like uh, one of uh, platform C tools to analyze and optimize. So visualization, um, what we have done as part of platform C tooling um, works on different levels. So it has um, really starts from the component overview that what components exist in the system and how they are mapped on the hardware and uh, goes deep into really fine granular level where you can see the data flow and control flow, also how they are communicating. So there are different types of hierarchies. So this involves as a total um, goes from, from a few thousand to, to a million objects. So there it was uh, really important for us to, to see that how we can actually cleanly vis uh, visualize that. So uh, as I mentioned uh, that uh, all is built on top of uh, Eclipse and Java technologies, open source technologies. So you see at, at the bottom, there is a Eclipse tooling platform and then we have a source uh, of information is either uh, C code or let's say Elf. Uh, object code and otherwise we have AutoSAR or MSR. So we we fulfill uh, uh, we fill this uh, information into a Amalthea model. So all the information is collected into a Amalthea model. So based on that, then all of our tools work on top of a Amalthea model. So here you have uh, two um, blocks. So one is optimization side. Actually, you can look into the code and say, okay, uh, these things are. Uh, offer me opportunities to optimize and uh, I need to uh, work uh, on the optimization level. Or you can go on the visualization side and start uh, looking into your architecture and also the data flow or control flow or communication among them. So why actually um, this talk has the title of conquering uh, large scale visualization is actually you can see one screenshot uh, from the density of the communication within the multi-core systems in an automotive domain. So this is uh, actually one um, major um, task in the system. 
and uh, if you combine all the activities uh, which are which which are done by the tasks then it uh, is a huge uh, set of uh, information which needs to be displayed so first thing is that uh, this needs to be handled uh, in a way that it uh, it has uh, no performance bottlenecks and uh, the other thing is that how you can actually how quickly you can lay out uh, such huge amount of information so we have not directly gone into into java fx and uh, we have tried other technologies as well so two years back uh, i think it's it's two or three years back i also came to EclipseCon, and we tried their um, what we uh, achieved with with series we we um discussed or mentioned also our experience with that so not only series we also looked into uh, other frameworks before deciding uh, to to switch to java fx so there were few decisive um, parameters for us so for example model modification so Sirius has the for that a built-in support uh, java in java fx you actually need to, to connect that so it's not not built in so the custom layouting it was also important for us and it it actually became more important as soon we we went into very fine granular diagrams for let's say the, the huge amount of data and uh, the at the end uh, we went and uh, we put a lot of uh, focus on the performance because in other frameworks what, what we saw that um, it takes a lot of time to actually start up the first diagram so once the diagram is there you can actually persist that and re reopen that but it was taking a lot of time and then java fx uh, gave us the opportunity to even with the huge amount of data it was able to quickly launch the uh, the scene and then um, it was there other um uh, let's say features they were uh, quite comparable to the with the framework but uh, this also um, provided more um, richness to the to the user interface and more control to the to the every object. So what Java FX actually offers is um, features like uh, you can actually blend Java FX together with Swing and then there's WT. You can have uh, web um, pages you, uh, based um, user interfaces you can build. And the best thing is that you can actually define the cascading style sheets and you can use them. Also offers uh, animations. And uh, yeah, there are also, as I said, that uh, sufficient uh, diagram options are there and then layout. As I said, that layout is an important aspect for us. So how you can actually start, there is no, uh, not much of, uh, uh, let's say uh, difficulty or you can uh, you can actually easy starting curve is quite easy you can directly jump and say okay you want to to start with the diagram you create or extend the, the application class and just uh, simply draw the um, or create the objects give it to the scene and th there you go so there is no not much uh, which you really need to use as a simple um, uh, Java programmer, you can start uh, quite easily with JavaFX, and you do not really need to to go into much of the details. You can on uh, every object level, you can on node level, you can actually configure the the information. So for the the diagram options, um, what we have uh, looked into are uh, different types of uh, charts and tables. Uh, you can create wizards. So mostly focused on 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 UI. Um, path, but you can also, um, with the hierarchical structure, you can actually go ahead and build uh, component uh, structures of the system. So in the layout options, uh, there are some inbuilt possibilities in the JavaFX. So for example, you can have a V box or H box or border pane. So as the name suggests, V box and H box, they actually um, align your elements vertically and uh, horizontally so in the border pane actually you have the option to arrange the them differently 
in a sense that uh, you can actually decide that where you want to put them in the left or right, in the center or bottom or top of the pane. So it can contain more, more of these, um, these objects. But you can also embed uh, within the, the uh, border pane uh, V boxes and edge boxes. Uh, what uh, when the number of uh, elements are more, then you can actually go ahead and uh, and integrate Elk to JavaFX, uh, which we will come uh, later um, details. So custom layouts are also possible. So for example, in case if you are stuck with Elk somewhere and you want to put more logic or semantics to to your diagrams, you can actually uh, go ahead and build your layouts so with the inbuilt what you can do with the inbuilt layouts are you can see that this is a user interface from uh, one of our tools where you see the mapping of different tasks on, 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 on core as i said multi-core uh, from the multi-core domain so you see here okay we have uh, one edge box and within edge boxes we have uh, added v boxes and uh, then on this side, so this this works uh, pretty well, and uh, this is actually used uh, uh, with the use of uh, border pane. Um, so what can we do uh, more with the inbuilt? Um, so you can actually have a combination of inbuilt and custom layout. So here you see that uh, this is a V box, so simply the list of elements is, is there. So you just need to add another element, and it goes on and uh, adds the element to the to the bottom. So here we have a custom layout because uh, uh, with the V box or H box, it, it is really difficult because each of the node is has a defined position. So it was not possible for the other, um, let's say, inbuilt uh, layout algorithms to work with this. So what we have done is that we we, we wanted to to place these uh, bars on a particular uh, place in the pane. So that is why we have used a custom layout. So why um, it was not um, combined with Elk that. Uh, will also come come back to this so you can actually also see uh, another uh, screenshot here so this is also uh, inbuilt plus custom layout so but what happens uh, as i said that in between uh, before jumping to the why we have used a custom layout so what happens when you have a more number of objects and you are um, using your inbuilt uh, layouting. So inbuilt layouting cannot uh, help you as, as you see here in the, um, uh, there were more objects and then if you want to assign every object allocation you need to create a plethora of uh, V boxes and H boxes and then you need to actually um, see through that what is every uh, how is everything placed in the, in the outcome. So here actually L comes to comes to your help. So what Elk uh, offers you is uh, so many different uh, um, layouting algorithms. So you can ac actually choose that if you if you want to um, think, for example, you want to work with the spawning tree algorithm or the way um, uh, different layers are built, or you can actually see that there are a few um, layout algorithms which are there to confuse the, or let's say, obfuscate your, your visualization. So for example, if someone really wants to um, uh, only to make uh, some screenshots, which is only understandable to him, then they can actually see that, okay, elk randomizer is, is one possibility, or for example, elk uh, disco, which is uh, to um, lay out the, the disconnecting. Um, Subgraphs, or you can actually use different Gravis um, uh, based uh, algorithms, um, or it has the, they have a different, uh, let's say, display, or let's say, for from the physical or other um, domains, a physics domain or other.
optimize where you actually need to want to see the structure of, uh, of molecules. For example, DOTI for uh, uh, directed graphs and also the, the rectangle packing if you just want to, to pack a lot of the UI element to one. So what do you need to do actually to work with, with Elk and Java Ethics? So what you need is uh, you need to define your layout algorithm that what is uh, uh, um, the algorithm or the way, what is your use case? So for example, you want to use layered one, you want to use tree or you want to obfuscate or there are disconnects, all your data looks like. Then you can actually go ahead and define a root node for, for that graph and then edge properties, edge properties that how the edges should be defined, what are their directions, um, what type of routing you need to use and uh, node properties. And the third step is actually gluing them together and adding creation, the diagram elements and then diagram elements um, um, given uh, all these nodes are given uh, the name and you see the result uh, when you launch this. So another aspect, so this configuration is very, very important. For example, you define here a lot of, um, for example, um, um, how uh, much space you want to, to have uh, within the node if you do not uh, rely on directly on um, milk and you want to define it on your own. So here I, I hope um, you are able to, to read it. So for example, you, you define the algorithm here. Then you have uh, um, your edge properties, for example, edge routing. So you want to use the orthogonal or you, you want to use polylines or you want to use lines. So for example, what kind of lines should be used for the edges? So direction of the edges. So right sides, for example, from the node, it goes to, to the right side. And then you can actually define the, the nodes. Um, for example, uh, how, what is the spacing in between the nodes? and then hierarchically because we are using here the, the layers. So then, as I said, the second step is to actually define uh, the nodes uh, within the edge, uh, sorry, within the graph. And after, uh, once you have done that, you actually um, tell or define that how actually different edges need to be created among the, the nodes. So once you have done that, then only thing which you need to do is that uh, calling uh, these two um, parts of the uh, code together and gluing them together and then later on just adding some information if you want to to add uh, some more, for example, uh, the, the text uh, data or what kind of objects they are. So some meta information to the every graph so that you can also additionally do. So once we have done that, what do we get? So for this particular scenario, um, or with seek, uh, um, the steps which we have defined, so if we take layered algorithm and then give it to data and then uh, see through how it um, um, results using the, the ELK, uh, layered algorithm. So in this case, you can see that uh, this is the, the starting node and it is actually placed uh, all these nodes uh, uh, quite um, um, in a in a way that they are actually um, clearly lined uh, in the in the layer. So you can see actually from this you uh, go to the next layer. So it is also well um, aligned to the next level of layer, and then it keeps on building. So one thing is, is very important here to actually see that um, there are uh, two uh, direct communications, or let's say two communications um, to ABS calculation element. So this is from one is from layer um, second layer and one is from the layer three. So based on uh, from where the most number of uh, uh, communications are happening, Elk actually intelligently decides to where to place that. So because it decides that, okay, there are more communications, it should be in the next layer instead of having it somewhere here. So why we, we um, or I'm saying this is that we, we have experienced that if we do not use ELK, uh, these, are, these are actually the, uh, the problem points. Um, 
elk also decides that how to actually place these edges um what um, how much the distance uh, needs to be so for example how the edge routing as i said before this is also a parameter which you can configure um so next thing is that actually you you can see um uh, as as i have mentioned here so you uh, if you do not use elk you actually need to to uh, handle these problems on your own so if edge is going through the nodes uh, and uh, how to actually place these things so this is actually solved for you uh, that. So example is um, is pretty simple here, uh, but uh, explains the power of elk uh, um, for us. That uh, what type of problems you you may encounter when it goes to further. Okay, so so another uh, important part was that how elk handles the the container nodes. So I just uh, skip uh, the the core part and directly go into the um, um, diagram. So important part here is that L can also handle uh, uh, container nodes. For example, you can put uh, nodes within nodes and then it still works. But the important part here is that if you do not uh, um, define the positioning um, or do not uh, mention the positioning of a, a parent container, related to that uh, the child uh, elements so then it can go or it can give you problems so that is what you need to care take care when you are using um, elk the container. um elk do um, also has uh, limitations it's not really about uh, um, only because of the layouting it's because if you have some logical or semantics of the, of the node yeah then you uh, need to see um, that here in the diagram, actually, Elk is unable to, to, to arrange that. So it just uh, organizes your, your nodes as, the, as you want or clean, um, give it a clean structure, but uh, layouting structure, but that's not what always we want. So if there are these in these diagrams, so for example, it's a deadlock visualization. So you need to have the tasks and uh, the semaphores properly uh, aligned in a, in a circular fashion here. We have a hardware diagram, so memories and cores, they need to be related in a, in a better way. But Elk does not understand that. So uh, the solution for us was to actually go and do the custom uh, layout to actually embed that uh, logical relationship. So as you see from Elk, when we, we implemented the custom layouts, we were handled to actually, or uh, were able to give uh, more information um, layouting information structure uh, structured in a better way uh, with semantics so custom layout another example um, so here uh, the reason was that it was why we used a uh, custom layout was actually we wanted to to have the levels uh, clearly defined with uh, respect to the communication because elk was placing the nodes in um, in a different way, a different way in a sense that uh, it was going to, um, yeah, cleanly. It was it was less, um, let's say, edges uh, um, obfuscation kind of uh, like you see here. But it was um, for us, it was important to actually give an impression that okay, this is a communication and this is some shared data and it is getting access from both sides. So we wanted to, to have it in this way. So there also um, we had put a custom layout algorithm uh, to work with. So actually um, this we, we fixed this a uh, lot of edges problem by just uh, highlighting that edge, which is in a uh, user really wants to see. For example, if they want to see what excesses are there, so we just highlight this and all other edges disappear. So enough for the layout, but how do you actually test your um, diagrams if you have huge uh, number of objects? So for that purpose, uh, we also were able to, to use test FX. So JavaFX application uh, uh, 
uh, what um, important was that uh, when we created the, the JavaFX uh, nodes, we were we haven't uh, given any node IDs. For example, if it's, it's optional, if you give the, the node ID, but if you want to test that with the test FX, you actually need to give uh, node IDs because then you can uh, actually see the what operations you can perform on that on that node. So it clearly defines that. So what you can also do is you can check um, that what uh, is uh, the possibility for you to uh, to see the number of diagrams elements that is also possible. So quick summary that uh, JavaFX um, offers more than uh, user interface visualization, has fast startup time, uh, and built layout for UI elements they are quite uh, quite good. For Elk. Uh, um, layouting of large scale data is not a problem. Can integrate with uh, with JavaFX performance is good. So large variety of algorithms are there. You can actually go up to millions of uh, objects visualization. That shouldn't be any problem. So Elk, uh, yeah, where Elk cannot help, you can go ahead with uh, your uh, custom layout. Community support is there, and uh, yeah, documentation is is there. Yeah. So using uh, well, test FX, you, you can also uh, check um, that of your, uh, about the elements of, of your diagram. Um, as, as an overall experience, uh, so from here, the, we say that, OK, Java FX is a part where we say that visualization of large number of uh, um, elements. And then the part is uh, where we say that, OK, uh, layouting. Um, so, uh, what uh, message uh, from us, uh, or what, what we are trying to convey here, that our experience tells that both JavaFX has the capability to uh, store, um, or let's say, visualize a large scale of uh, number of elements, and uh, Elk can also handle that together with Java. So it's a very powerful framework. So not not only limited to UI programming. So you can go ahead and really. A dig deep and, and enjoy uh, visualization with that. So in case if you need any help, uh, you can contact us. We are happy to share our experience with you guys. And um, thank you very much um, for your uh, yeah, patience and uh, yeah, attention. So I will now see if there is any question. Let me so there is so there is a question which says uh, perhaps I miss something. Does it mean JavaFX is more scalable than than SWT? So actually, I I cannot um, say that. Um, um, because I don't have any comparison data on that. So I, I don't have uh, the, the amount of uh, information which we have put into, or let's say the same number of elements from SWT and also JavaFX. But our experience says that if you um, visualize the same amount of data, for example, large scale data in JavaFX and SWT, you will get much better performance in JavaFX. So that is what, what we can say here. And scalability, yes, it is. So what we have seen as of now, if we, if you want to know the, the number of elements, so it is more than um, two million uh, objects which we have already visualized with JavaFX. So it it is it was able to handle um, uh, this much information. So I don't see any other question. Okay, so um, SWT is is um, why? So there is a question: Why SWT is less interesting than JavaFX? So what we have done um, until now with JavaFX, we we haven't done that with with SWT. So it's it's not less interesting. I would say that the idea was that uh, to start uh, uh, with JavaFX and see 
that if that suits uh, our use cases. So when we started and then we went on with this fancy stuff, which was available in JavaFX. So then we we kept on going with JavaFX. So there we, it's not less interesting, but I would say that uh, in SWT, you, uh, you do not have that much uh, flexibility in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, styles. That would be my argument. Okay, so there's no more questions. So thank you very much. Again, if you have any questions or you want to uh, to try and uh, need our help, please contact any any of us. Thank you very much.